Welcome back to the second half of Artist on Art. I have a wonderful pleasure of speaking with Dana Backshaw and Rick Kuhn. They are both a part of the drama production Cell Talk 1410 that will be premiering Sunday, September 22nd at 4 p.m. at the Calvary Episcopal Church here in Santa Cruz, California. It's a very interesting, award-winning play. Uh, Is it out of the U.K., Dana Bagshaw? That's correct. It was written in the UK and won the award there, was published there, and went through about seven different performances. But this will be the first staged performance here in the United States. The first. It's the U.S. premiere, folks. And Dana Bagshaw is a local playwright, (laughs) um, an artist in her own right, and you were drawn to do this play. And let's just give a little synopsis of the play for our audience that hasn't heard of Cell Talk 1410. Uh, these are writings by two women from the 15th century. Mystics. That's correct, yes. And? It was, it's based on their two writings. Julian of Norwich was the mystic. She was an anchoress who lived in a cell attached to a small church in the town of Norwich in England, which is um, in the eastern part of England, Middle Eastern. And um, Marjorie Kemp was her contemporary. She was 30 years younger, and she wrote um, the first so-called autobiography uh, in in, in English, she dictated it to a scribe, whereas Julian wrote the first book that we know of by a woman in English. She was writing at the time of Chaucer. So I was very much taken by these two books, and I thought, what wonderful, contrasting characters we have here. We need to put them together in a play. So you wrote the play? I wrote the play, drawn from their writings. Wow! So, what makes somebody a mystic? Wow, that's a good question. It's sort of a label that is used now, but it's someone who, through a life of contemplation, um, feels that they get direct messages from whatever the source is. Well, she happened to be Catholic? She, 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 well, she lived at a time before the Protestant Ref- Reformation. That's one thing that drew me to this, that it was before the split of the church. Before so, Martin Luther and yeah. all that, that came and, down. And, right. And so um, there were rumblings of the Protestant Reformation in England. They were known as Lollards. And so we deal with that in the play, but it was not the official... Reformation at that point, and um, so, so there's there's something. It was just the church, right? And and that church was Catholic rooted. Well, it wasn't thought of as Catholic at the time, but yes, well, yeah. it was I mean, certainly it was Christian. Rome. Yes, it was it, it was from Rome. Mm-hmm. It was from Rome, mm-hmm. and it was Christian, mm-hmm. and uh, uh, full of. I hate to use the word mysticism, but. It, it's full of miracles. There's some. There's elements to the Catholic um, liturgy mm-hmm. where the the priest is able to change uh, wine and bread into mm-hmm. the blood and mm-hmm. and body of they Christ. They believe it actually happens. That yes. there's this this mm-hmm. great transformation that happens uh, on the altar, mm-hmm. uh, and the miracle is then received. By mm-hmm. the the clergy or the 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 members of the of the the church, and so it, it seems like that was a time where there there was an an enabling of mystical uh, relationships that is a little bit hard to find today. Would you say? Well, I think so. I think people, though, uh, through meditation are trying to recapture that. Um, that transcendence mm-hmm. towards a higher being. Being, yes. <laughs> so, Dana, when did you find out about this uh, story, and when did you start writing the play? 
Well, it was about 15 years ago, I guess. Wow. When I was, I, I moved to England. I lived there for 18 years. And um, I belonged to the, uh, the parish church there, the Church of England. And I got invited to, on a retreat with Julian of Norwich. And I said, Julian of Norwich? I've never heard of him. And the priest just kind of smiled and said, uh, Julian of Norwich is a woman. I think you need to come along. <laughs> so <laughs> You need this education. Uh-huh. So um, I went on this lovely retreat out in uh, the country in, Le- in Leicestershire, the rolling green hills of Leicestershire. And um, that's where I've, I discovered her and was just gobsmacked, as we say in England, by her her profound thinking and uh, her her logic. She was she was an amazing thinker and a, and an amazing writer. So part of the story um, and the reason we have Rick Rick Kuhn here because he is acting in your play. Yes. It's a four person play. Mm-hmm. Is that Three, correct? Actually. Three three person play. Mm-hmm. So we have Julian, Marjorie, and then Marjorie's husband. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Let me get you up here, Rick. And so. Um, you're you're playing a long-suffering husband. Yes, well, he's not uh, as interested in the spiritual seeking as his wife is, and he's more practical. So he has to adjust his life to her spiritual life. And he doesn't particularly uh, enjoy that always because he doesn't have his wife with him all the time. She's always going on pilgrimages to Jerusalem and other places where she feels drawn. So uh, he has to basically take care of the business, take care of the kids, and eventually, uh, he has to make a sacrifice that is pretty major for a husband to do, which I'm not sure we want to talk about it now or no, if we want to no, wait for the play I, to... I think that this, you cannot tell the ending. Right, it's not <laughs> exactly the, the ending, ending. Well, it's okay, actually, but, but it's a major plot Don't point. give anything away. Okay, yeah. <laughs> but it's interesting <laughs> that he, he actually uh, does do that. He makes the sacrifice that, that, he's, uh, that uh, she asks, and uh, that's, it's, it's pretty big, so... Um, that's what's interested me in the part. It's it's uh, it's kind of the um, I don't know the uh, comedy relief in a way, <laughs> exactly to the spiritual side of this piece, which um, can be pretty deep and mm. heavy, I would imagine. Right, and they're both looking for a direct experience of the divine, and they're you know are even at times being accused of being heretics, and you know he's always concerned about that because they burned heretics at that time, so. Uh, so he's concerned about his wife and tries to protect her, but she wants to go on and, and seek for the divine. And so he tries to support her the best he can. And for our dear audience, to, uh, I want to just give all the information of, out about how um, you can see this play, Cell Talk 1410. And it's funny, it's such a play on word because we all talk on our cells, but this is when people talk from their cell. <laughs> they're, they're like <laughs> meditation uh, monk cells. Um, the first performance, the premiere, is September 22nd at the Calvary Episcopal Church at 532 Center Street here in Santa Cruz. It's at 4 p.m. It's outdoors with live music from that period. Mm-hmm. So we have music that you would have heard if you had been around in the 14, 1500s. Mm-hmm. That's right? 14th no, century? 1400s. 15th 14, century. Yeah. 1400s. The second time you could see it is the next Sunday, which is September 29th, and it will be at the First Congregational Church here on 900 High Street, just down the road here from UCSC. Then we have the following week, Sunday, October 6th, and that's at St. Jude's Episcopal. And that's in Cupertino at 2920 McClellan Road in Cupertino. And then the final performance will be October 13th at the St. Francis Episcopal at uh, Willow Glen. There, uh, we're asking for donations at the door, and you can find out more information about how much the tickets cost by going to the Facebook page. Is that right? They could, yes. Mm-hmm. And. So we could just tell them it's ten dollars. Well, we can't really tell oh, them because this is. I'm sorry, sorry yeah. this is a public radio station. Okay. We have rules against that. Okay. But there is a small uh, cost for the tickets, and uh, that uh, will a, be you know, donation, well, and the proceeds are t- to go to the homeless shelter here in Santa Cruz. Here in Santa Cruz for the Santa Cruz performances. Yes, and then the, the again the shows are are they all outdoors? 
Yes. yes. Oh, they're all going to be outdoors, mm-hmm. and they'll all have live music from the period. It's a, it's a tremendous uh, undertaking that you've done uh, here, Dana Bagshaw, because uh, it's not often, first of all, that we get to hear the stories of women from the 1400s. Um, there are very few women writers from that period. Like you're mm-hmm. saying, mm-hmm. some consider Julian's work the first book written by a woman in English. Mm-hmm. And and then Marjorie's having the first autobiography uh, by a woman in English when there was very few writers at that time. It's a whole nother world, psychologically speaking, exactly. uh, uh, technologically speaking. Mm-hmm. The, the It's the medieval period. Mm-hmm. Now, Dana, you happen to be an expert. Is that correct? Well, I do not consider myself an expert. I, I spent a lot of time with these two books that we've talked about. I did have the play read by an expert, and she said, yeah, it seemed all right to her. Um, there are several things in the play that I do make up, and I wanted to see get a sanity check on that, and she, she felt that it was very plausible, so... Well, that's that's what you have to do with these mm-hmm. historical dramas. Is mm-hmm. you know what happened, but how did it? How did that person come to make that decision to act in that way? Well, for example, Marjorie in her book she talks about this horrible sin that she committed, and she is so horrible she can't even confess it to the to the priests. So. And in the book, she never says what it was. So you had to figure out so, what was the horrible sin. Yeah, so that must have been fun thinking about. <laughs> it, was, <laughs> it was a challenge. Yes. She came, what she came up with was inter- is interesting. So yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't want to give anything <laughs> Another away. Teaser. But you gotta, you gotta come out, folks. Uh, either September twenty second for Santa Cruz or September twenty ninth. September twenty second at the Calvary Episcopal, and then September twenty ninth at the First Congregational. Uh, you have uh, Rick here, who's playing Marjorie's husband, John Kemp. You also have Ali Epi is mm-hmm. playing Julian mm-hmm. of Norwich, and uh, Ali's played in. Uh, she's she does quite a bit. Um, she's been in a lot of local Santa Cruz plays. Mm-hmm. She has, and she's also um, a. Uh, she performs psychodrama. Mm-hmm. It's very mm-hmm. interesting. You also have Shannon Hemphill will mm-hmm. be is playing Marjorie Kemp, mm-hmm. and uh, this is uh, Shannon's first acting role in quite a while, and also a little special for you. Is that right, Dana? That's right. <laughs> this is your daughter who, it is, yes. who's playing Marjorie Kemp, and how has that been uh, telling your daughter how directing your well, daughter? I haven't been directing her. That's been the beauty of it. We have a wonderful director, Matt Matthews who's from um, San Jose, Cupertino area. And um, so I'm just hands off on, or try to be anyway. (laughs) (laughs) Um, And that's been the beauty of it, watching him draw her out and develop in this role has been, it's been a beauty to watch, yes. So Matt Matthews is the director Mm -hmm. who comes from over the hill. He's a director with the Santa Clara Players And he also sings um, in the San Jose Symphonic Choir. But what's interesting to me, Dana Bagshaw, is that you are the playwright. And you kind of gave your baby up to Matt to direct. How has that been for you as the playwright? It's a relief, really. (laughs) Especially when it's your daughter. (laughs) Well, I'm not a director. I'm not a trained director. Um, I have, back in England, to kick it off and get it off the ground I tried to direct it a few times but the best productions were definitely when someone else took it at hand and um, and it's just a joy to be able to see different people and different directors work with the same script and yet develop things completely not completely different but to give it its own, their own personality and, and flavor it's, it's, and, and to see it work and for different people in different settings. It's really fun to see that happen. And so how would you say Matt Matthews, what would you say his flavor has been um, that added to this production, the way this, the way these plays will be? Well, 
I find him a very spiritual person, and he really um, takes that part of the play seriously and um, uh, really wants to honor it and keep it authentic. So um, that that really amazed me that he took that serious of a, a take on it. And yet he has a good sense of humor as well, and he wants to develop the, the humor part of it. He really enjoys the role of... Uh, of John, the husband, which I think we all do. In in England, some of the productions, and in fact, the publication, were just the two women. And I definitely feel that adding the male character gives um, the audience someone to really identify with. Because these women are very, like you say, it was a totally different mindset. And it's hard for us to understand these women. And so we identify with him when he tries to understand them. Right, yeah. right. Like he, mm-hmm. his process of, of making uh, sense of mm-hmm. what's happening. So he sort of becomes like an everyman figure. You, you know, the medieval play, everyman. To me, he's, mm-hmm. he's that, like that figure. And so, Dana, would you mind sharing with us a little bit about some of Julian's mysticism and and what, when you say that you first uh, discovered her Mm -hmm. and were really taken up by by her writing, is there some some small anecdote that you can tell us about that, that you have discovered in her? Well, she's famous for her saying, all shall be well. Um, And She just was able to cut through all the baggage of the church of that time and have a really clear vision about um, what her spiritual life, the shape of it was going to be for her. And um, she was very brave. She made some pretty radical statements such as? Such as, God is our mother. Oh, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> now, that hasn't come around until just, you know, within the last... 20, 30 years. Yeah, uh-huh. right. And here she was talking like that. In the 1500s. Right. 1400s, yep. 15th century. Mm-hmm. Wow. And she didn't get burned for it. She did not. Well, she got lucky, huh? Because she did also pr- got printed, so... Mm-hmm. Well, well, it was no, it? No, it was all scribed. It was all scribed, and printing. her, her manuscript actually disappeared, and was not discovered until the twentieth century, in a library in Paris. Really? So it had been copied and maybe sent there for safekeeping. I don't. No one really knows. So somebody so got rid of it. Yeah, one of those priests. Or, well, <laughs> they may have done. You know, we can think of conspiracy, or we can think it just got lost. It just got yeah. lost. Yeah. As many things get yeah. lost yeah. <laughs> six hundred years yeah. later. Yeah. <laughs> well, how? What a remarkable discovery uh, when that was when that. It happened. was actually Marjorie that was put on trial for heresy. And and she was being influenced by Julian. Yes, I think so. I think so. But she was not really the the thinker that that Julian. I mean, she just she went about in these white clothes. She had the gift of tears, it was called, and she just made a nuisance of herself wherever she went. <laughs> and Especially she, for John, her husband, huh? <laughs> <laughs> when she got to Leicester, which was the town I was living. In, in England, which is another thing that interested me about it. The, the mayor of Leicester just didn't like her around. She was a disturbing influence on the other women. So he had her arrested and tried to put her on trial for heresy, but the church protected her at, at this point. I mean, we think of you know, the church as being the one of burning... The people heretics. at the, st- the heretics, right. the Inquisition, but, that kind but of. But in this case, it was just you know it was the people that were disturbed by her, and they tried to get the church to to say she was a heretic, but they said she's not, so, so they let got, her go free. Oh, so she got lucky. <laughs> uh, That's not in the place, so well, I can tell you that part. What's Marjorie's history? Did, did did she ever get lost the way Julian's book got lost? You know, I'd, I'm not sure about that. That's a good question. I don't know. But I, you can get her, her book. Yeah, it's called The Book of Marjorie Kemp. It makes for a very difficult reading compared to... Well, Julian's is, is deep and profound, but it's very logical. 
And Marjorie is just so all over the map, literally and, in, and mentally. I mean, she... Um, it doesn't make sense, and it's kind of a scramble, and it's, 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 it, it took some work to try to untangle it and say, okay, where was she when she came through Norwich? What was she doing in her life, and what would she maybe have talked to Julian about, and that kind of thing. What a, what a fun place to be able to, to work out of in your imagination mm-hmm. to, to find these two women um, seem pretty different from one another uh, as far as, as you're saying that Julian being a logical theologian in a way. Exactly. And yes. Marjorie reacting to mm-hmm. this theological, philosophical influence that she was Well, had. she just wanted a, an adventure, I think. She just was very venturesome and um, she wanted to go places and do things and and she same did. thing today. <laughs> <laughs> Very modern story, mm-hmm. yet taking place in the 15th century. Uh, Dana Backshaw, Rick Kuhn, both here to talk about Cell Talk 1410. The upcoming shows are September 22nd and September 29th. The 22nd is at Calvary Episcopal at 532 Center Street in Santa Cruz, and September 29th at the First Congregational church at 900 high street uh the performances are in the afternoon outdoors at 4 p.m and there will be live music from the period then also we have over the hill october 6th at st jude's episcopal Episcopal in cupertino and october 13th in willow Glen. there are donations suggested at the door where you can buy your tickets so please come early you can go to facebook and look up cell talk 1410 uh, Dana Bagshaw, thank you so much for coming on the show. Rick Kuhn as well. Thank you for having thank us. Thank you for having yeah. us.